Peter Jackson's King Kong is still among my favorite films, and its subsequent video game is probably my favorite. Not to say it is among the very best video games ever made. The characters, the creatures, the environment, the world building, it's simply S tier. Peter Jackson really wanted to tell the story in the best way possible, with top notch CGI, not only for its time, but also most of it still holds up today. That's something that amazed the nine year old me when the film came out. It really looked impressive, and still does. From the moment that I saw King Kong, I wanted to become a filmmaker. I mean, it was as simple as that. If I hadn't happened to watch this particular movie on television as a nine-year-old, I probably today would be an architect or a plumber. I wouldn't be doing the job that I'm doing. Are you all right, Jack? You don't look so good. You're turning green. It's OK. But even better than the film itself was the video game launched in a time where the entire video game landscape seemed more hopeful. I played it every single day for years. I was absolutely mesmerized by it. No dinosaur slash creature video game has even come close to reach this game's heights, at least for me, which is a bit of a shame, given that this game came out almost 20 years ago. Although, I'll be fair, there are some very interesting titles in the works that do look like its successor of sorts. Peter Jackson was able to delve deeper into the island's lore, where we play as Jack Driscoll, played by Hadrian Brody, facing all sorts of animals, from giant crabs to the Umongos V-Rex, an hypothetical evolution of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Although there were worse creatures, such as the Venatosaurus, big featherless dromaeosaurs, feathers just weren't a thing back then. We also get to play as Kong, and while it's fun, he didn't quite came close to being as visceral as when we got to play as Jack. Kong is just a force of nature, killing everything very easily, except for this Piranhodon. Piranhodon was the worst. As Jack, we get to explore this amazing ecosystem from a realistic perspective, and I think the footage speaks for itself. The environment is almost nightmarish. Like, we're really stuck on an island where every single thing is trying to kill the other, where nature doesn't care of what humanity deems to be correct. This island is being flooded, and all the creatures' territories are shrinking, making them extremely aggressive. There were some extras in the game, where we got to see some concept art at a museum, and it inspired me so much. I could not stop drawing Venatosaurus, V-Rexes, giant centipedes, and spiders. I still do it today, actually, especially spiders, as you know. And so, this marvelous universe created by Peter Jackson became an obsession to me, even more so than the Jurassic Park films. Alan! Uh, Alan! The idea of a group of men stumbling upon a place forgotten by time, while simple, is probably my biggest passion. And that's how the Congo comic book series was born. I always knew I wanted to do something that involved that idea, while still trying to be as original as possible. Like, the V-Rex is basically an evolved T-Rex, the Kazirex in our series is an evolved Bellosaur, and that's a fact for every single cryptid we feature in our story. Even the Jibafofi is based on real Central African tarantula species. Just take a look at the page from our second book, Congo Through the Pad of Darkness, and compare the color palette, the style, even the vegetation. Every detail is like a tribute to this amazing world created by Peter Jackson, and I'm not afraid to admit it, at all. Of course. For the cryptids themselves, I tried a more accurate approach. But that's not saying much, as dinosaurs are constantly changing to the eyes of science. And that's a good thing. We should never think we already know everything about a certain matter. It's better to keep an open mind, isn't it, Spinosaurus? I can certainly say one thing. If it wasn't for Peter Jackson's universe, I probably wouldn't be holding this book I have here. Everything about School Island, Peter Jackson's School Island, really made me fall in love with this idea of a speculative evolution environment with lots of dinosaurs and creatures thrown into the mix. It's really amazing, it's one of my biggest inspirations. So let me know if you want me to delve deeper into Peter Jackson's School Island lore in a future video. I would certainly love to do it. Don't forget to subscribe, activate the bell icon and like the video if you enjoyed it. See you next time. <laughs>